In every important arena, from capital markets to technology and energy, Europe is falling behind the US. The average American is considerably richer than the average European, and the gap is growing. During the First World War, the Ottoman Empire, modern-day Turkey, was described as the sick man of Europe, with increased social unrest and economic challenges. Now it seems that we're all sick men of Europe, but not filled with unrest, but complacency. If we go back in time to the great financial crisis of 2008, the European and the US economies were approximately the same size. But ever since, Europe has fallen behind, sector by sector. And it isn't just a little bit behind. After the great financial crisis, the American economy skyrocketed, whereas the EU experienced crisis after crisis, not realizing its full potential. In 2022, the US economy was 28% bigger than the EU economy. This is of course a complicated issue, but it's interesting that the 448 million people of the EU is producing so much less than the 333 million people in the US. Even in Europe, everyone's daily lives are dominated by US tech giants like Apple, Microsoft, Netflix, Meta, and so forth. Which European companies come to mind in the everyday use category? Yeah, sure, there's Spotify, but who else? Of the top 20 tech companies by market cap around the world, there are only two from Europe, and one of them is SAP. And if you could see my face as I say this, it is not one of happiness. SAP is probably one of the businesses that inflicts the most pain per minute of use. The other company in the same category is ASML, and in my mind, that is deserved. ASML is one of the most important companies in the world, and TSMC could not produce NVIDIA chips without ASML. So far, I've mentioned two European tech companies that are big enough to compete with US companies. But there's an interesting pattern to note. US companies often buy promising European ones. For example, Skype was bought by Microsoft and DeepMind was bought by Google. This drains potentially market-leading innovations from Europe, and it illustrates that European companies can often be absorbed by larger conglomerates. But to be honest, I don't think that's the biggest problem when luxury clothing manufacturers like LVMH and Dior are some of the biggest companies in Europe. Fashion isn't what moves the world forward. The biggest European company by market cap is the pharma company Novo Nordisk, which boasts a market cap of $564 billion, whereas the largest US company is Microsoft, with a market cap of $3.1 trillion, or in other words, 5.5 times bigger. Or to put this in other terms, Microsoft alone is bigger than the entire French stock market by a couple of hundred billion. An important reason as to why so much of the world's innovation is happening in the US is the fact that private capital, venture capital, private equity and so forth, is so much more available in the US compared to Europe. In 2024, the European venture capital markets is expected to raise 26.1 billion US dollars, whereas in the US, the figure is 274 billion US dollars. This is an absolutely massive difference and I'd be willing to bet that a lot of that European capital ends up in the US markets. In addition to the market being smaller, many of the larger funding rounds are led by US VCs, not European ones. What about energy? Ever since the shale revolution, the US has become energy independent, a far cry from the 1970s when they, along with the rest of the world, were under OPEC's thumb. The US today produces 22% of the world's oil, according to the EIA. In the EU, the average member country imports 57% of its energy. There are of course huge variations within the EU, with Estonia only importing 10% of its energy, whereas Germany imports 63%. Until 2022, most of this energy was imported from Russia, standing for 27% of crude oil imports, 46% of coal, and 41% of natural gas. But after the Ukraine invasion, the bloc has imported more and more energy from the United States. Sadly, the the European energy crisis has led to Germany to increase the use of lignite coal, which is the dirtiest coal out there. And what's worse, they've even shut down all of their nuclear power plants. To my mind, discussing climate change without seriously discussing nuclear energy is about as dishonest and non-serious as it gets, but luckily the tone surrounding nuclear is changing. The fact that cheap energy isn't available has multiple downsides, and one of them is that the former powerhouse of Europe, namely Germany, is seeing its manufacturing output go down. This is a big deal, as more and more of what used to be European production will be moved elsewhere. Energy availability and consumption is also directly correlated to increased quality of life, as well as lower infant mortality rates and a whole lot of other positive effects. There are no rich, energy-poor countries. It's not like energy isn't available in Europe, it's just that there hasn't been any incentive to develop it. For example, the Norwegian power supply has the highest share of renewables and the lowest emissions in all of Europe. But Norway isn't adding enough capacity to keep the country energy independent. Norwegian investment in energy capacity hasn't been lower since 2006. So Europe is losing on tech, 
capital markets and energy. Is there any part of modern life where Europe is actually winning? Yes, we are the best at regulations. I find it insanely ironic that the AI Act is being touted as some landmark regulation that will affect how AI is developed. Do you think OpenAI cares about your precious regulations? OpenAI themselves have said that they would rather cease operating in Europe rather than comply. And be honest, Who's the winner of that exchange? Not that all regulation is bad, as some of the chemicals present in US food is actually illegal in Europe because they're directly harmful. No wonder Ozempic is so popular in the land of the free and home of the brave. But my biggest problem with the regulations is that the EU is regulating things that they in reality have no influence over. And all of this regulation isn't helping advanced society by aiding technological advancement rather the opposite. But hey, as the previous sick man of Europe, we could rely on tourism to get by, right? After all, two thirds of the world's tourism ends up in Europe. And if that fails, we could always sell luxury fashion and expensive wine. Without a greater sense of urgency, the European decline is likely to continue and only speed up in the years to come. In terms of pushing the world forward, one of the fields receiving the most attention recently is robotics. And in this video, I'll explain how robots are way cooler than cashmere. 